Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how I painted the Brazen Champion from the Scions of the Flame Warcry Warband. Here's our Brazen Champion, all glued together and primed. I used the Citadel Wraith Bone, which is a contrast undercoat spray paint, and the Citadel Glue. And you can see in the instructions, it's pretty easy, just a few components to glue together. This is the brush I use in this video. It's the Wargamer Character by Army Painter. And I'll put a list of all the paints I use in the description below. Okay, let's get started. So first of all, I took some ceramic white base paint and I used this just to fill in the gaps I missed when I did the priming. But the main use really was to go over all the flames with a nice light white paint and that's going to make them a little bit brighter when we start with the contrast paints later on and i coated all the flames all the little ones the one by his head as well with that white paint and then i moved on to the technical contrast medium and gilliman flesh and i mixed equal parts contrast medium to equal parts gilliman flesh and then mix those together before cleaning off my brush and starting to paint so here we go with that nice mix now. This isn't going to be too dark and it's going to give us a nice tone and fill in all those gaps with a rich shade. We just lost focus there for a little bit, but it's going to come back in a second. And you'll see I'm ending the brush stroke where I want most of the paint to pool. And that's a really good tip I learned online. And with these contrast paints, you really have to push it around and guide it where you want it to pull the most. And if you find that a lot of paint is building up on the more raised areas where you want that highlight, just dry off your brush and then wick away that paint. With the skin done, I moved on to a Yandan yellow, and this is going to be for the handle of the axe. And like the skin that we did, I'm just going to put one coat of this across the whole handle. And where I want it to be a little bit darker, like at the base of the handle there, or anywhere where there's going to be shadow from the hands or anything like that, I'm just going to add a little bit more of the paint in another layer and just make sure I'm guiding the paint into the recesses and the little creases that you can see there. And underneath, I'm just putting a little bit extra there. And then where I want it to be brighter on the top, I'm just wicking that paint away with the brush. Now it's time to do the flames and I've got some more Ayandan yellow, Griffhound orange and Flesh Terrors red. And these three work really well together for this effect. And I start with the Ayandan yellow and I'm going to give the flames a complete coat all over in the yellow. And I'm just going to leave a tiny, tiny bit where the flame meets the like weapon of, and the axe and the handle. And just leave a little bit of white there and that's just going to indicate where the flame starts. You can see here, I'm kind of using that contrast paint and make sure and it pulls in the recesses. And then with the raised areas, I want them to be a bit brighter, perhaps. I'm just kind of thinning it and working it around. And these paints are great for this. They also stay wet for long enough for you to do this effect. And you'll see in a second when we move on to the orange, how we're going to wet blend all three of these paints together. So to start with, with this base of yellow, I'm being quite generous and putting quite a lot on and covering it all. I chose to just do like one flame at a time just to make sure that the wet blend technique worked and then I moved on to the other flames later on. So that yellow paint is still wet and I go straight into the orange and now I'm looking at about 60 to 65 percent covering of the orange starting from the tip of the flame and then working down. Also where the flames kind of flick off on the sides I'm treating those as individual flames so I'm covering about 60 to 65 percent of those as well if they're higher up the flame then I'm covering them completely in that orange and then I'm just working it in and mixing it with that yellow to get a really nice effect there it can seem quite messy at this stage but you really have to trust the paints and kind of stick to that ratio like 60 65 percent of color and then let it do it do its job once it dries it'll all that kind of blending we've done with a wet blend in here is really going to show through and look good but it is daunting at first just putting that paint on but you've got to just be quite brave of it and and just go for it it is only paint after all and if you make a mistake you can just wick away most of the paint and then go back and start again 
but now we're moving on to the red and so now I'm looking for about a 30% covering with the red again starting from the top of the flame and working down so I want it really dark red at the top and then just getting lighter as it mixes with the orange and treating those smaller flames as individual flames too and just giving them the same 30% covering of red and blending it in so you can see I've been doing this for a couple of minutes now and it's still wet enough that you can blend the colours together. Now I'm going back into a little bit of yellow and a bit of orange at the same time and I'm putting those colours where the yellow and orange meet and where the red and orange meet and I'm just blending that together a little bit more just so it's not like three stripes of colour so we get a nice soft blend working all the way through. So coming up now you can see I've put too much orange on just here so way too much. So I wiped my brush on some kitchen towel, got a bit of yellow and then just wicked away that orange and spread it in. So it's really easy to take it off if you put too much on and you can blend it again. So it really gives you a lot of room to play around this paint and I really liked how it worked for this wet blend effect. To finish the flames we've got some contrast black templar and I'm taking a tiny tiny bit and just putting that on the very tips of the flames and that's to give us the indication of where the flame is turning to smoke and this just really finishes it off and uh, makes it look kind of semi-realistic. Next step is to take some contrast snake bite leather and this is going to be for all the leather parts and the belt on the straps those kinds of things and this is a really good contrast paint one coat of this on these leather uh, parts of the models look really good and for pouches and things like that you really get a lot of shade and a lot of highlight from it i found the contrast paints can be very different some go on really thick and dark whereas others appear a lot thinner and a lot more pale um, so it's really just getting used to each paint and working out kind of how much you can get away with with each one some of them, like I did with the Gillum and Flesh, you can use the contrast medium to just thin it down a bit for some nice effects. But others, you can, you'll can you need them a bit darker, and maybe two layers. But you'll see on this model, most of the, the contrast paints we used just had one layer. And there we go, that's the snake bite leather applied. And it looks really cool how it gets that effect right away. Now we're back to black with the contrast black Templar and give it a good shake, really important with all these paints. And here I'm painting the boots and also I'm going to give the gloves a coat of black as well. This is a really great contrast paint as well and this can give some nice effects over metal so you could use known oil or, or this over metallic paint and that's a really great use I found when I was doing the terrain that using the contrast paints over a base coat of lead belcher gives a really good effect. For leather boots like this, this, this black templar works really well and I've just given one coat I did on some of the other models from the warband, I gave them two coats, but it was just too strong and I lost some of the highlight and it just it got too much of like one tone all over. So I found just one nice thick coat of Black Templar is really good for the boots and you don't need to worry about putting two coats on. You could put a little bit more perhaps in the more of the deeper recesses, but for, for this warband I found one coat nice and thick that worked really well. Next we're on to the Terradon Turquoise and this is a really nice colour and again one of those contrast paints that goes on really well in one coat and with this I loaded the brush up and I'm putting quite a lot on here and starting in that deepest recess there where I want the most shadow and I'm covering all those scales that they're using as like a cloak from the fire breathing beasts that they kill when they're out in the wastelands. And this bluey green turquoise is going to be a great like complement to the orange, red and yellow in the flames. And those two colours kind of schemes contrast each other really well. So if you put too much of this contrast paint on it can get quite messy. So this is a good time to take some base paint and just check the model. And if it's gone over into the other areas you need to paint, just give them a little coat to clean it up. But now we're going to move on to Skeleton Horde Contrast Paint and this is going to be for all the claws and any horns and things like that. This is a really nice brown colour but it's not as deep and dark and rich as the snake bite leather and so it's perfect for like old skulls, bones, horns, things like that and I'm using it for the claws here of the beast and it goes on really nice, gives us a nice shadow but also keeps the highlights really strong. I've also used like the back of the kind of scales um, where I imagine that would be like some kind of skin underneath so I've given that skeleton horde 
a coat all over that. And again, this is just one coat going on. Now it's time to take some Griff Charger Grey and this real pale bluey grey is nice for little kind of material pouches and things. And you can see here it's very pale, but I'm putting a, quite a bit on where I want it to get in the shadows and recesses. And then we're going to get a nice pale highlight over the top and that's just going to make it stand out from the rest. Now it's time for some orange, so Griff Hound orange, really nice colour this is. And this is going to be for all the material and the cloaks. And you can see I'm putting this on really thick and starting it in the kind of recesses where I want most of the paint to pull. And then just really pushing and pulling the paint around, guiding it where I want to be and kind of wicking away a lot of it from the more raised edge, like the front of the, the kind of cloak there, where we don't want too much because we want a nice strong highlight. So I'm adding quite a bit on. My brush is really full of paint at this stage. And the back of the cloak's getting the same treatment loads more on the brush and pushing it into where it meets the other materials but just being careful so it doesn't spill over onto them the thing with when you kind of go overlap the contrast paints it's difficult to clean it up because you have to go back with a base and then another application of contrast paint so i'm just taking my time i'm in no hurry to get these finished so just taking my time and making that paint do the work for me while that orange is drying i want to make a nice highlight color for those scales so I take a blue, a green from Vallejo and some white and a little bit more white and an old scruffy brush. And then what I'm going to do is mix the white, the blue and the green together to make a kind of dark turquoise. And then I'm going to mix some of that dark turquoise with white. So I've got two different tones there, one brighter than the other. And for any dry brushing, it's important to load up the brush, wipe away most of it on a kitchen towel and then apply it gently to the model. So here I'm starting with that darker of the two highlights and it's quite a bit of paint on there. I've, I've took most of it off, but there's enough to leave a fair bit behind and it's coming back into focus now. There you go. You can see that's really brought those scales to life. I'm being careful not to go in the recesses at all and just brushing over the surface. So that Terradon turquoise is such a rich color for a base. These highlights really contrast it. and I think it looks really nice. And against the orange and the reds, you can see it really starting to come together now. So that's the dark turquoise highlight applied. And now once that dried, which doesn't take long with it, with dry brushing, I'm moving on to the lighter one. And then I'm just going over a bit heavier on the very uppermost section and then lighter as I get down into that little bit of shadow there and then heavy again when I get to the edge and then back to the top just to really emphasize that that's the highest bit that's going to get the most light and it's also going to get some light coming off the flames there as well. So you can see those highlights look completely different when they're on the model and we've got really dark tones on the paper and when you compare that to the really dark Terradon turquoise it looks completely different on the palette than on the model. You can see that highlights can actually be quite dark. Okay, now we've gone back to the contrast snake bite leather and on these straps here, I want those to be a little bit darker. And so I'm getting some of the paint, loading it up and I'm pushing it onto the kind of section where the two different leathers meet. But I'm being really careful not to get any more on the very edge of that leather. And that's gonna give us a really bold highlight along it, but also give us a really dark shadow. And you can see they look very different here with that nice dark that's going to dry really nicely give it some more depth and just separate it a little bit from the other colors and tones going on on the model now we've got some contrast medium and flesh tear as red this red is going to go over our orange material so i take four parts contrast medium to two parts flesh tear as red and then mix those together i want this material to be kind of in between red and orange but quite dark so this flesh tear as red mixed with contrast paint will work just right for this. I really want this red to get in those shadows and make them really deep and dark. So just as I did with the orange, I'm loading up the brush, pushing it into the recesses first, ending my brush strokes where I want a lot of the paint to build up, but just being careful now not to go over the very edges so that we keep like an orange highlight as much as we can. When I was painting the terrain, I found that these contrast paints are really good for layering over each other. And that as you get used to them and mix them with that contrast medium, you can really get some nice effects by mixing two different colors together. 
And I think for a beginner painter like me, you can get some really nice effects quite easily just by using that technique. And I really like how it works on material like this where you've got those deep shadows. And I think it's important, like I learned that you can put a darker tone over a lighter and it works really nicely for something like this. But if you put a lighter paint over a darker one, you don't get such a, a good effect. Almost more of a, like a glaze, I suppose. And there we go. There's our brazen champion. He's looking great with all those kind of paints now. And that just leaves the metal to do. So that's pretty much all the contrast paints done now. So we're going to move on to some lead belcher base paint. Uh, so a good shake. Really important to mix these paints together well. And then I'm just going to apply the lead belcher to all the metal parts. And that includes the silver and the gold parts. So these braids, I wanted those to look more like metal than any kind of organic material. I think that makes a nice contrast to all the different leathers we've got going on. And I'm going to put this lead belcher all over the axe, the mask, and also that little kind of metal hook on the front of the chest there. That's going to get some lead belcher too. And now we're going to take some Agarus Dunes contrast paint and we're going to put that over the lead belcher on all the metal that we want to be like a gold or brassy colour. I find Gilliman Flesh works really well if you want more of a bronzy brassy colour but this Agarus Dunes is great for a kind of a richer gold effect. This is also going to work really nicely with all the other colours we've got on there and so I'm popping it all on and where it kind of meets the other browns, it's going to leave a little bit of shade as well. So that's a bonus. And you can see I put a little bit too much on there and it filled in the gap too much. So I cleaned my brush off and I took a smaller brush this time, cleaned it off and then just wicked away that excess paint that fell into the gap there. So you can see these contrast paints could be quite forgiving if you make a little mistake. And when you've got all these kind of similar colours working together, if they overlap a little bit, it's not even noticeable and you get a little bonus of having a, an extra bit of shadow that kind of fits in with the colour scheme. Now I take some known oil shade and I'm going to put this on all the silver parts. Now you could use black Templar contrast paint for this and I've used it on some of the scenery and some other metal pieces like this where I've mixed it with um, contrast paint and you can kind of either put it on straight or, or wet it down with the contrast to give a different effect. And I've also on some of the other models from the warband, I took some of this known oil and wet blended it with the Agarus Dunes and that gave a kind of cool effect on the weapons where the fire was on the axe and it kind of looked like it was really getting hotter as it was closer to the flame. But here I want these horns to be a little bit darker than the mask itself so I just put a little bit on there but not on the face part of the mask, just on the horns. Now I take some 0.997 silver by Vallejo and this is going to work as a highlight for all the metal work and just bring it back to life and so I'm focusing on the edge of the axe here and giving it a nice edge highlight and that's going to kind of give us the feeling that this is a sharp blade. Looking at the model later on when it was finished I probably didn't highlight it enough and it could use a little bit more of edge highlighting with the silver um, and maybe some like scratches and a little bit more battle damage but you can put on as much or as little as you like and then I just went along here almost like a little dry brush effect just on the raised areas and I even used this for the gold parts too and that highlighted those so going back over with that edge highlight so I'm just using the side of the brush when I first started doing these highlights on some of the terrain I was literally trying to paint it on like you would a pen but I figured and watched some videos and learned that it's much better using the side of the brush like this. And here we go on here, just pulling that down, starting from the top. And I'm just trying to go in one motion downwards for the highlight. So I don't want the highlight to be in the shadows, just on the raised parts. So I'm pulling the brush down in a downward movement. And again, just going over all the gold parts as well with the silver. It kind of gives a nice metallic highlight. And then where that flame is going to be reflecting on these horns on the top, I put a little bit extra on there so I was a bit heavier with the brush and made sure that I got a really good coating of the highlight along the top and also on the jawline so that that kind of would be the raised areas, maybe the cheek a little bit, where it would get the most of that light from the flame. And there we go, that's our tabletop battle-ready standard brazen champion that I think 
just from a couple of hours with some contrast paints, we get a really good effect. As a beginner, I wanted to use some techniques that were easy and then to give me a standard that was uh, achievable and that I could take my time with and enjoy the whole process. It was pretty daunting going into these miniatures at the beginning, especially the fire parts. But once I watched a few videos and tried out the techniques on some of the models here, I was really happy with the results. I hope this video helps you with your scions of the flame. And if you want to see how I painted the other warband members, check out my other videos on the channel where I've made them for about six of these. I've also made videos on how to make the bases for the scions of the flame. And I've gone for a kind of rocky wasteland effect that will kind of complement the colours that I've included in the models. I also made a video on how to fix the painted models to the painted bases if you chose to make them separately. I'll put links to all the paints I've used in the description below and there'll be affiliate links but they won't cost you anything extra. In fact they can save you up to 20% with Element Games and for every sale made through an affiliate link I get a small commission that's going to help me develop the channel and make much more content like this. Thanks so much for watching, good luck with your painting, and please like the video if you like it, subscribe for more Warcry content like this, and don't forget to hit that notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. <laughs>